Well, I know it's a little late, but I want to give honor to my earthly father and the other men in my life who've been such an influence. My dad was born into a German-Swedish family. Both his parents came to America in the early 1900s, and his father worked for the Union Pacific Railroad. My dad was the oldest of two boys, and when his father died young, my dad became the primary breadwinner in the family. Daddy, and I can't break the habit of calling him that, was a hardworking but somewhat uneducated young man who worked at various jobs, most of them having to do with sales type work. My dad was very handsome. And when I was a teenager, he did some modeling for the local Western clothing store in Cheyenne where we lived, which made me um, uh, somewhat of a celebrity. He never had a chance at higher education, but when he married my mom, my maternal grandmother, offered to send him to a trade school to become an undertaker. Now, I never heard the complete story, but I do know that he turned down the offer. The other men in my childhood life were two uncles, neither one of them by blood, but both by marriage. One of them, my Uncle Pete, or PJ as he was called, was from a large Irish Catholic family, and he and my aunt did not have any children together. Since I was the firstborn to the sisters, Uncle Pete became a second father, mentor, and it didn't hurt that I was born on his birthday. He was a self-made, wealthy businessman and spoiled me silly. At the same time, his moral compass was pointed true north in his private and professional life. He gave me more than things. He gave me life lessons as well. My other uncle was Uncle Damon. He was also a very handsome man and had proudly served in the army in World War II. He and my Aunt Helen had two boys, and so my childhood was spent with a brother, two male cousins, and we were all extremely blessed to have the family we were born into. As recently as a week ago, my brother called me, and he, as he does periodically, uh, as the oldest of we four, he thinks that I've got all the answers, so he asks questions about our childhood together. I told him we'd better start taking notes because one of these days my mind may not remember these things. And now for the boys in my life. I only had one real boyfriend in high school, but when his church broke up our relationship, I met another boy who would become my first husband. We all make mistakes in this emotion we call love, and I'm certainly no exception. However, my daughter was born from that marriage, and that makes it all worth the trouble and heartache. I had not been to church for quite some time when I met this guy named Jim. He said that it was love at first sight, but it took a little longer for me. We courted for a total of three weeks before we got engaged and married three months later. Five years later, he and his sweet mother introduced me to Jesus. Why did it take so long, you ask? Well, God's timing is everything, and was definitely so in this case. When we got married, Jim had a four-year-old son, and I had a five-year-old daughter, so we started a combined family. Now let's talk about how God works in families. It's this simple. Make God the head of the house, and you can't go wrong. Mind you, I didn't say you wouldn't have problems, but you have someone to go to when Jesus is part of your life. My husband is one of the greatest husbands, father, stepfather, grandfather, and great-grandfather to walk the earth. He never wavers to help anyone in his family, and yours too, if you'll let him. He is faithful in everything he does, and this is a particularly difficult Father's Day for him. Our son, Monty, died in February at the age of eight, 58. The saying is that we're not supposed to bury our children. They're supposed to bury us. So true. However, Jim and I have this great faith that we will see Monty again. And we live for that moment. So you see, we have earthly fathers, grandfathers, uncles, cousins, and such. However, the Father who truly comes through for us 
each and every time is our Heavenly Father, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Have you surrendered your life and the lives of your family to him? If not, it's never too late.